Moreover, the evidence shows that Dragomir Milosevic ordered the shelling by way of modified air bombs. One need only refer to the order of 6th of April 1995, in which he ordered the Elysia Brigade to, here I quote, immediately prepare a launcher with an aerial bomb and transport the bomb for launching. The most profitable target must be selected in Rasnitsa or Sokolovich Colonia, where the greatest casualties and material damage would be inflicted. End of quotation. The next day, a modified air bomb hit Rasnitsa, killing Ziba Kustovich, injuring three civilians, and causing massive destruction to the civilian neighborhood in which it exploded. The trial chamber considers that the accused's position as commander of the SRK obligated him to prevent the commission of crimes and to ensure that the troops under his command conducted themselves with respect for international humanitarian law. But the evidence presented to the chamber shows that the accused abused his position and that he, through his orders, planned and ordered gross and systematic violations of international humanitarian law. Moreover, the accused made regular use of a highly inaccurate weapon with great explosive power, the modified air bomb. And it is clear from the evidence that the SRK well knew that these weapons were indiscriminate and inaccurate. The modified air bombs could only be directed at a general area, make it making it impossible to predict where they would strike. Each time a modified air bomb was launched, the accused was playing with the lives of the civilians in Sarajevo. This judgment, like most judgments in this tribunal, illustrates the need for full respect by those engaged in armed conflict for the fundamental norms of international humanitarian law. These norms have developed over the centuries to the point that they now constitute binding legal obligations. Foremost among the norms is that which requires the protection of persons not taking an active part in hostilities, that is, civilians. These norms, in turn, are based on values that are fundamental for every human being, namely the integrity of the individual, the right to life, and the right to be protected from fear, pain, and violence. As such, they are applicable without distinction of any kind, including ethnicity, nationality, and religion. Mr. Milosevic, please stand. The trial chamber finds you, Dragomir Milosevic, guilty pursuant to Article 7.1 of the statute on the following counts. Count 1, terror, a violation of the laws or customs of war. Count 2, murder, a crime against humanity. Count 3, inhumane acts, a crime against humanity. Count 5, murder, a crime against humanity. Count six, 
inhumane acts, a crime against humanity. The finding of guilt on the count one has the consequence that counts four and seven on lawful attacks against civilians, a violation of the laws or customs of war, are dismissed. The trial chamber sentences you, Dragomir Milosevic, to a sentence of 33 years imprisonment. Pursuant to Rule 101C, you are entitled to credit for time spent in detention. You are also entitled to credit for such additional time you may serve pending the determination of any appeal. And pursuant to Rule 103C, you will remain in the custody of the tribunal pending finalization of arrangements for your transfer to the state where you will serve your sentence. The chamber emphasizes that this is but a summary of its findings and that the only authoritative account is the written judgment which will be made available after this hearing. The hearing is now adjourned. All rise for